This is one of the funnest camera lenses I've ever used, and it's super simple to make, and you can make it at home yourself. This is my 3D anaglyphic camera lens for DSLR, and it takes photos like this. And the images can be immediately viewed in 3D using a standard pair of red, blue 3D glasses. Don't believe me? Check out these people's reactions. What the hell? You made that on your phone? That's so cool. Is it 3D? Yes. Ooh. That's awesome. Actually works. Actually works. See that? Look at that. Look, you can feel it. That's cool. This camera here uses the basic principles of pinhole photography. But instead of one pinhole, it's got two pinholes placed closely together, which kind of give you this uh, stereographic double exposure effect. When a red filter is placed over one of the holes and a blue filter over the other one of the holes, it gives us that anaglyphic effect, you know, that you can see with the red-blue glasses I've been talking about. Pinhole cameras offer an infinite focal range, but due to their small aperture, that's the hole, the opening here in the camera, they require a very long exposure. This means that things in the photos that aren't steady will appear kind of blurry or like ghostly. This, combined it with the overall softness of the image, kind of is what I think makes pinholes so unique. We're so used to seeing clean and polished 3D in the cinemas that I think that this lens here brings us back to like the early days of 3D images, stereoscopy, and is like a delight, just an absolute treat to work with, and I think you'll have tons of fun with it too. Things you're gonna need for this project are some aluminum foil, some scissors, a uh, marker of some sort, black, but I like to have like one of those gold sharpies on hand too, just in case. This one here, that's tape. Wow, pins. You're gonna need tiny little pins or sewing pins or needles work. Yep, but gotta have those on hand for a pinhole. Here, we've got a tape measure. That's something you need. Now, you're gonna need some type of plastic film. This is red and blue. You're gonna want red and blue, but to be honest, I'm gonna use the red and blue from inside the glasses because the red and blue inside the glasses will help it match up better when I'm viewing it with the exact same type of glasses. Also, I noticed this blue here is kind of more of a blue, and this is kind of more of a cyan. Is that the name of that color? I don't know. Let me know. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what you're going to need there. Oh, and a body cap. And this body cap here I uh, made on my 3D printer, so it already has a hole in the center, but you can use a body cap of whatever type of camera mount system you have, and you can take one of those body caps and drill a hole in the center on your own. So yeah, that's what you need. Let's, Let's get, get into it. it. Now I've already cut out my tin foil for this project. I just made a tiny little square, but to be honest, it's not gonna fit on the back of my cap. So I'm gonna need to make this square even smaller. Let's go about three quarter inch by three quarter inch. Here's a little trick I've learned from making tons of pinhole cameras. Don't ever put your pinholes in on some type of soft substance. Do it on a hard surface. That's why I'm not doing it on the paper. Lay it as flat as you can and just try to prick it. Don't even try to feel it pop through. Just give it a little damn prick because the smaller the hole, the better. And since there's two holes in this pinhole camera, you're going to be letting in a little bit more light than you would be with just one hole on your normal pinhole camera lens. And to be honest, we want to go as narrow as possible. We want to get these holes basically like almost right beside each other to give us that focal length that like intersects and gives us that perfect 3D effect. All right, and just hold it up to the light in a window or in your house to make sure that you are getting visible light through those pinholes. P.S. I have no fingernails, so I can't pick up anything. So I'm happy with my pinholes now. I actually redid it because I wasn't happy with the first pinholes I did. They weren't quite the same size and to mess around with it, it's probably just easier to poke two new pinholes and try to get them as close to the same size right off the bat. So 
I'm gonna take my little piece of foil here. Once, once again, I have no fingernails, so this is extremely hard. All right, place your bit of foil on the back of your body cap here and mark the X and Y axes on the back of your body cap so you know how it's gonna line up. And just kind of put it there in place and center it. All right, it looks pretty good. Put a small piece of tape on the foil here and now we're gonna line it up on the back of our body cap. It's easier if you have the X and Y axes marked on your body cap already so you can line this up. From here, I place it gently and I just move it till it seems to line up with my X, Y axis and it seems fairly centered. I'm just gonna tap it down lightly to see if it holds. Flip it over and make sure that your pinholes seem like they're relatively centered. This actually looks like I did a pretty good job. Quite happy with this. I'm gonna tape this down permanently from the back now. I'm gonna use a darker tape though than the scotch tape just to keep any light from leaking in around the edge of that foil. Now that you got the foil taped down to the back of your body cap, we're gonna get that blue and red plastic and we're gonna lay it down over our two holes making sure that one is red and the other is blue and they don't overlap anywhere near the holes. Probably straight down the center is the best way to place these pieces of plastic. A little bit of a voodoo superstition here too is to uh, color in the back of your foil black with a sharpie just to keep light from bouncing around inside your camera. But you want to do this lightly because you don't want to crinkle your uh, foil here. No way. All right, we're gonna try to get the film out of the 3D glasses here without crinkling it too much. Well, let's kind of square these off. We really just need enough to cover our pinhole. Now comes the time to put the red and blue plastic on the back of your lens. I've already done it to this one here and I've realized that the blue needs to go on the left and the red needs to go on the right. Think red, right. So what I did here is I cut out two little pieces of plastic and I laid them down side by side so that the edges were nice and tight. And now I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on it like that so that it holds it with its edges nice and tight together like that. Now, keeping them pinched together, I'm gonna put another piece of tape on the bottom. Boom, just like that. And now I'm gonna put the blue on the left side, the red on the right side, and make sure to cover up each pinhole with one of the two colors, but not both. This is the tricky part. Perfect, right down the middle. The nostalgia that I get from this lens is unparalleled and I hope this little project has inspired you to pursue and create and endure and do all those things that you do with your imagination and uh, bring them out to the world so everyone can see. Uh, by the way, this is uh, Arlo. His name means Strong Hill. If you love adorable little kittens like Arlo, why not check out Ace and Sam at the Upper Credit Humane Society. Ace and Sammy are brothers, are six years old and have been together their entire life. And they come as a package deal and they got tons of love to give. I have to tell you that. Just like Arlo, they're the cutest damn cats on the block. And you can check them out at the Upper Credit Humane Society at uppercredit.com or email info at uppercredit.com. Wow, see this is love you get from a cat. If you like this video and want to see a more in-depth version of the build, make sure to check out my channel. And uh, if you want to build yourself, go for it. Make a video, do whatever. Maybe give me some props. I'd appreciate that. Until next time, folks, stay fly.